The ninth video on block diagrams is a tutorial sheet on multi-input loops and the use of MATLAB to validate or display answers. Now, we're going to assume that students have gone through all the earlier videos in this series on block diagrams because this video is giving tutorial questions. Most important thing is that students should pause the video and attempt the questions before looking at the work solutions. There's no, no benefit to the student if they look through the solutions before they've made a really good attempt themselves. Otherwise, they won't know whether they can do it unaided. Background information, just to remind you that we're going to use this sort of formula here. So if you've got a loop input and you've got a signal somewhere in the loop, then the transfer function between them can be written as forward path, what are the blocks between the loop input and the signal, and one plus return path, where return path is everything in the loop. <coughs> We're not going to derive that result, but we are going to use it. Now, the other thing we're going to use is the fact that because we're using Laplace, we can use superposition. So there are, where there are many inputs, we can add the effect of each input separately to get the overall response. First question then. For the loop below, find an expression for y. So you'll see y is here, but the key thing to note is there are two loop inputs. There's loop input r and there's a loop input d. And the second part of the question, use MATLAB to determine y of t when r is a unit step and d is a step of magnitude 0.2. But we'll focus on the first bit for now and we'll move to MATLAB later in the video. So there's a reminder of our block diagram and the transfer functions. And you remember, we've been asked to find y. So I can use my forward path over return path type of formula. So if I do it for r, what's the forward path? The forward path between r and y is gm. What's the return path? It's 1 plus gm. So I simply write y equals gm over 1 plus gm times r. What about this disturbance signal? Well, the forward path between the disturbance and the output is g. And again, the return path is 1 plus is gm, so you get 1 plus gm in the denominator. And so this is the answer that I'm looking for. And no more is required. Now you can plug in the numbers. You're given the numbers here, g equals 3 over s plus 2, m equals s plus 1 over s. But I'm not going to do that here because that's just tedious algebra, which you can do by yourselves. Second question. For the loop below, find expressions for u of s and y of s. Now you'll notice that u is here and y is here. However, with this question, you'll see there's three loop inputs. We've got a D, we've got an N, and we've got an R. Now, the second part of the question says use MATLAB to actually determine Y of T when R is a unit step, D is a step of magnitude 0.2, and N of T is some form of a random signal, perhaps with a small variance. So we'll do the MATLAB at the end. For now, we'll focus on part one. So here's our loop again, and you remember we're interested in U and y. So I'm going to start with y. First of all, what's the dependence on r? So we just use forward path over 1 plus return path. So the forward path gm and the return path gmh. What's the dependence on d? Well, the forward path was g and the denominator is going to be the same for everything because the um, the return path is the same loop. So we get g over 1 plus gmh times d. What's the dependence on n? Now this one has got a little bit of a sting in it. Because if you look at how n goes round and gets to y, you'll notice, and I'll use blue to highlight, there's a negative sign in the way. So actually what you're going to get is minus gm divided by 1 plus g. M, H. So that's the forward path for the N. Now let's do U. So how does U depend on R? Well, the forward path between R and U is just M. Again, 1 plus return path, 1 plus G, M, H. What about D? Well, to get from D to U, you'll notice I've got to go all the way around the loop and back again. 
So you've got everything in the loop apart from you've also got this negative sign. So you're going to get minus gmh over 1 plus gmh. And then finally, if we look at the n, you'll see we get minus m over 1 plus gmh into n. <coughs> Question three, and you'll notice we're making these loop diagrams get messier and messier. So here we want to get an expression for y, and you'll see we've got three loop inputs. We've got an n down here, we've got a d here, and we've got an r here. And also we want to use MATLAB again to actually plot y once we've got the expression. First then, let's look at the solution for y. So we've reminded you what the numbers are. I'm not really using these numbers, those are there so you can practice plugging them in if you want to. We're going to focus on the algebra. So if I take y and I say, alright, let's start with r. What's the forward path between r and y? Well, it's just g m. And what's the return path? You'll see I've got 1 plus g m l h. Next, let's look at d. What's the forward path? It's just g and again the denominator is the same and finally what about the n well to get from n through to y you'll see I've got to go all this way around and I go through a negative sign so the forward path is actually minus h l m g so everything and I've got 1 plus g m l h in the denominator Now let's look at MATLAB. So a quick reminder that the syntax you use in MATLAB is forward path, that's FP, so it's the same. However, this RP stands for remaining path or what blocks remain in the loop. So make sure that you um, remember that when you use MATLAB. And the other thing is we're going to note that when you use Laplace, the system must be linear and therefore we can use superposition. So we can find the overall value of a signal just by adding together the impacts of all the different loop inputs. Now, the other thing to remember if you're using MATLAB is when you're using step.m or lsim.m, they will default to a particular time scale. If you want to add signals together, you need to make sure that they're computing at the same sample times. Otherwise, it's meaningless adding them together. So that just means a little bit of bookkeeping in your code. Let's go and show you then how we do this. First then, we'll enter, we'll do question one, we'll enter the transfer functions, there they are, there's my g and my m. Next, we'll find the closed loop transfer functions for the disturbance and for the set point. So you'll see the commands for the disturbance, it was feedback g comma n, g was the forward path, m was what was left in the loop. And for the set point, it was feedback g times m, because that was the forward path, comma 1, because there was nothing else left in the loop. So I've calculated those two transfer functions. Now the clever bit. And first of all, I'm going to calculate the response for y. So they're used to the set point. So the dependence of y on the set point, yr, is step times gcr. And you'll notice I've also collected the time instance. Why have I done that? Because I can now put those same time instants into the step function when I calculate the response to the disturbance. So you see I've gone step GCD times 0.2 because the disturbance was magnitude 0.2 comma T. So now I've made sure that those two signals have got the same time instance. I can finish with a plot and you'll see now what we get. So if we look you'll see the total response is the red the response to the set point is this blue, and the response to the disturbance is this green signal down here. And it won't surprise you that the green plus the blue obviously gives you the red. What about question two? Well, here we had three transfer functions, so we'll enter those first. There they go. And then we had three different feedback statements because we had three loop inputs. So you'll see for the set point, the forward path was mg, the remainder of the path was h. For the disturbance, the forward path was G, the remainder of the path is HM. And for the noise, you'll notice we've got this minus sign down here, as we said, and then we've got forward path MG, return path, uh, sorry, the remaining path H. And now, 
using the same tricks with the time scales. You'll see I've calculated time here and then use that time to get the response for the noise and the disturbance. So I'm going to just run all those lines together. You can obviously pause the video if you want to read them in more detail. And now let's have a look at the figure and what do we see? We've got four figures. You've got the total response is this red line which jiggles up and down a bit and that's because we've added noise. You remember that n was supposed to be a random variable and there you see the response to the random variable is random as well. The response to the disturbance is this green curve which decays back down to zero as expected because we did have an integrator and the blue curve what's the response just to the set point. And finally Question three, which was the messiest of, of all, four transfer functions. There you go, you can enter those. Three feedback statements again, because you'll remember, and I'll just go back up so you can see, we had the transfer function between the set point R and the output, forward path MG, remain path HL. For the disturbance, forward path G, remainder path HLM. And for the noise, a minus again, as you noticed, forward path LHMG, remaining path just one. Again, you'll see the trick with the time scale to make sure they're the same, and the plot. And we'll do all that in one go. And there's your figure. So you can see again the response to the noise. This black curve jitters up and down a bit, as expected, because N is random. Green, the response to the disturbance. Blue, the response to the set point and read what happens when you add them all together. So in conclusion, we've given a tutorial sheet on simple block diagrams with multiple inputs and some simple work solutions where we've focused on the algebra rather than putting the numbers in. And then we've demonstrated how you can use MATLAB to do the actual number crunching and display plots and things when you need them.